Hello to everyone. My name is Alarco Ciesa. I'm the person at the World Foundation for the program on rehabilitation. It is a great pleasure for me to be here today with all of you um, at the meeting of the um, European Society for Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation for the Special Committee on Public Health. What I would like to introduce to all of you is the WHO strategy on rehabilitation that we call Rehabilitation 2030. I very much hope that you enjoy it and I wish you a good meeting and a lot of fruitful discussions. And now we go to the presentation. The main message that I would like to give you today in the context of the presentation of the Rehabilitation 2030 strategy is that high quality rehabilitation must be available, accessible, affordable for all who need it. And the number of people in need of rehabilitation is steadily increasing around the world. Let me introduce the population of health trends that talk for this increasing need for rehabilitation. We, need, we know that the number of people living with, or the, the number of people affected by infectious diseases is decreasing. We know, however, that the number of people living with the consequences of injuries is still very high and will continue being high over the years to come. We know that the number of people living with the consequences of non-communicable diseases is steadily increasing. And when I talk about non-communicable diseases, I'm talking about people with neurological conditions, such as stroke, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson, but also people with cardiovascular conditions like uh, pulmonary diseases or diabetes, or people with mental health conditions. And we know also that we are living in an aging world and that the number people in older age is steadily increasing. All of these tell us that the number of people with rehabilitation needs, it is also steadily increasing. For this reason, we have to advocate more and more for rehabilitation interventions needed to be integrated along the continuum of care in acute, post-acute, and long-term care, but also at all levels of the health system. Rehabilitation services need to be provided at primary, secondary, tertiary level, and also delivered at the community level so that everyone in need access them. That is the reason why WHO is very strongly promoting the strengthening of the health system to provide rehabilitation services because we know that if we strengthen the health system to provide rehabilitation services, the chance that those in rehabilitation interventions that are needed are integrated along the continuum of care and at all levels of the health system will be higher. We recognize, of course, as WHO and also in the context of Rehabilitation 2030, that there has to be an intersectional collaboration when we talk about rehabilitation. Because at the end of the day, it's about financing mechanisms. It is also a development issue. The provision of rehabilitation services is also, there is also strong interlinkages with the social sector. And of course, the education sector and the labor sector as platforms where 
in the context of which rehabilitation is provided. We know that this intersectional collaboration is needed. However, what WHO is promoting that sin rehabilitation needs to be integrated along the continuum of care and at all levels of the health system. If we strengthen the health system and its stewardship role to provide rehabilitation services, then rehabilitation will be strengthened as a whole and will be strengthened through the point of view of the integration of services. We live today in term the context of a new developing agenda, a new developing, a developing agenda that is framing and shaping the agenda of all UN agencies, of all non-governmental organizations, of all health professional organizations, and actually the, whole, the society as, as a whole. And this is the agenda of the Sustainable Development Goals. And the Sustainable Development Goals, as we will see, also provide a window of opportunity for rehabilitation. We know that this Sustainable Development Agenda is a very ambitious agenda because it intends to target all the barriers that are impeding that development is sustainable. That is the reason why it is ambitious. From the perspective of WHO, we are mainly concentrating in, on goal three, ensure, ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all and all ages. And it is a very good goal to work on because nobody would argue that health contribute to sustainable development and that sustainable development contributes to health. So it is a very cross-cutting goal. In order to achieve this goal, WHO has a very, very powerful mechanism. And this powerful mechanism for contributing through health to development is universal health coverage. The reason why this, the Sustainable Development um, Agenda and Universal Health Coverage in Goal 3 is a window of opportunity for rehabilitation is because if we look at the definition of universal health coverage, we will see that we are talking about the provision of quality essential services for health promotion, prevention, treatment, rehabilitation, and palliation according to the need and without financial hardship. And we see the agenda of rehabilitation is already included in this main strategy of WHO. We don't need to advocate anymore from its inclusion, but we need to advocate for its promotion. We need to tell the world rehabilitation is part of universal health coverage and need to be included in it. And we will go a little bit into the details of universal health coverage a little bit later. Let me tell you what is the mechanism that WHO use to promote universal health coverage. The mechanism is through strengthening the health system. That is the reason why in the Rehabilitation 2030 strategy, the strengthening of the health system is so important. What does it mean really to strengthen the health system? Strengthening the health system means that you have to pay attention to all the building blocks that constitute the health system, and you have to strengthen all of them. That means that you have to strengthen the financing mechanism for services. You have to strengthen the health information system. You have, because you need to monitor how much progress countries, for example, are doing when providing 
services, health services, as part of universal health coverage. You need to strengthen the workforce, that there is a strong workforce being able to provide services. You need to strengthen the provision of medicine and technologies, including also assistive devices, assistive products and assistive devices. And most importantly, you need to strengthen in the leadership of a country, and in many cases, the leadership of ministries of health for the agenda, in our case, the agenda of rehabilitation. And if we strengthen all these components, then we are strengthening, or that we will be able to strengthen that, or the, ensure that rehabilitation is integrated in health services. So it's not only about the advocate or the advocate for rehabilitation services as separate services, but it's really about strengthening the system so that the rehabilitation services are provided as part of the health services. That is the mechanism that we are promoting. And we are promoting it in the context of this um, Rehabilitation 2030 call for action that was launched in 2017 here at WHO. And this call for action really put forward WHO's commitment for the agenda of rehabilitation. It was impressive to see the executive boardroom, the room where Ministry of Health made decisions about the progress of the health agenda around the world to see this room full of rehabilitation stakeholders and countries and ministries of health to being discussing the agenda of rehabilitation. So it showed very much the commitment of WHO for this agenda. This call for action had a concrete number of actions. You will see that we are talking about 10 actions. You don't need to look at, into the detail now. You can go into our web page and you would look at them. The point that I would like to make now is that actually if you read later each of these actions, you will see that they refer to the health system, what we need to strengthen in order to provide integrated rehabilitation services. So each of the actions are addressing one of the building blocks of the health system. So there is, you need to, or the, the actions for a country need to be taken at a, as a whole so that we really strengthen the system so that rehabilitation, rehabilitation is integrated as part of um, health services. Let me now tell you what, and we these actions of the call for action we are promoting among our partners and also among the partners of the European Society for Medical for Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation and also the International Society of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation. And I have to say, it is a great pleasure sometimes to visit countries and to see how much they are doing for implementing this agenda. I was last week, uh, for example, and I could take another example, but I was last week in Russia and I was uh, impressed by the way how the Ministry of Health is taking the leadership of rehabilitation and is really implementing and strengthening all the building blocks of the health system so that rehabilitation services are integrated along the continuum of care. But now let me very briefly tell you in, in a couple of minutes what are WHO actions, the actions that we are carrying out so that we can support countries towards the implementation of this uh, call for action. And let me go back very briefly to the concept of universal health coverage. And WHO, or when we talk about universal health coverage, we represent it as a cube. A cube that has three dimensions. One of the dimensions is the population that needs to be covered with certain services. The other dimension is the services that need to be covered. And the third dimension is what 
costs need to be covered for those services that are provided for that population. The reality in countries is that countries has a certain budget, a certain money to provide services as part of universal health coverage, as part of the health sector. And never ever the cube of money is as large as the cube that represent the need of the population. So what countries need to do is to start developing a strategy so that they close gap. First, they co close the gap of the population that is not covered with minimum, at least with a minimum services. So that the first objective is that the whole population is covered with a minimum essential package of services. When you have achieved that without the people having to pay out of pocket for these services, you once you have reduced also the gap of um, sharing fees for essential package of services, you start to, in, to close the gap of the services that need to be covered. And the challenge is always, and in most countries of the world, that rehabilitation services are usually not included as services that need to be covered for the whole population without out-of-pocket payment. So we need to really start including those services, those rehabilitation services as part of universal health coverage. Countries come to WHO and ask, okay, let, tell me how I should start, which are the rehabilitation services that we need to include. And up to now, we really do not have a clear answer to that. That is the reason why we have started the work of developing a package of rehabilitation interventions that would allow countries to decide what are the rehabilitation interventions that need to be included as part of universal health coverage. What we are doing is to develop a package of intervention or describing the interventions that need to be provided at primary, secondary, and tertiary level and also need to be delivered in the community. In order for countries also to be able to develop a budget, how much money the provision of in these interventions will cost, we are also determined what is the workforce that is needed, what is the equipment and consumables needed, what are the assistive products needed and the infrastructure needed to provide those interventions at the different levels. We have started, just started the process. We hope that we will be finished by the end of 2018 so that from 2020 on, we can give a clear answer to countries when they ask, ask us what are the rehabilitation interventions that they need to include in universal health coverage. We know also that this package will not do the whole job that is needed in countries. Because actually, when countries take the leadership and decide to invest on rehabilitation, they go somehow in a cycle process. So they start planning and asking themselves, OK, how, where I am, where I am as a country in terms of being able to provide rehabilitation services. Then once they have determined where they are, they develop a strategic plan and they also develop a monitoring and evaluation process in order to be able to monitor over time the progress that they are doing in terms of the provision of services. And this cycle goes on then with implementing and review, implementing and review. So what WHO is doing to is, in order to support countries, has developed different tools that we have given, as you can see, different acronyms for this purpose, for guiding countries in how to determine where they are, 
how to develop a strategic plan, how to develop a monitoring and evaluation process, and what are the indicators and how they need to implement rehabilitation. So these are really an overview of these different tools that we have developed as part of a support package on rehabilitation and uh, that very soon will be available for the public and that we are already piloting and implementing in different countries. The countries that we have started on uh, for the time being in 2018 are these ones that you are seeing in this slide. It is in countries around the world. And, um, and actually, we, we really receive more and more requests from countries where we can perceive going or the, making the link with the uh, beginning of this talk with the reflecting the increasing need for rehabilitation around, around the world. So we need everyone, not only WHO, respond to this need. WHO is developing um, all these tools to support countries, but also you, any or every one of you, it is in the position from your societies in your countries have a role to play to support a decent able of strengthening the system to provide rehabilitation services. So I would motivate you to look to the call for action to the different actions and start to discuss internally how you can move this agenda forward. I'm happy or I have been, I'm happy having talked to you. And, uh, and as I said at the beginning, I wish you an enjoyable meeting with a lot of fruitful discussions. Bye-bye.